Good morning, saints. Welcome to our service today at Spirit Word Ministries on His glorious day that He has made from the very foundation of the world. This is going to be part 22 of our teaching on how to cast out devils on July the 9th, 2023. July the 9th, 2023, part 22, how to cast out devils. Praise God forevermore. Another beautiful day, beautiful week. I believe the rest of the summer is going to be spectacular. And um, it's, it's a blessing from the Lord. Amen. Let's pray for rain at night and beautiful sunshine during the day. Hallelujah. Now, if you remember last week, we were doing the drop-down uh, techniques. Today will be the last day that we'll be doing that because I think once we get through today's session, what we'll be talking about, uh, we'll be picking up from back pain, like I told you, disc areas, skin, hair, all pain and weaknesses. Then we're going to get into addictions and there's a couple of sub subsets for that. Um, we're going to get into uh, pharmacia. That's why I sent that out today. We're going to also go into a general category uh, that people have. But see, since it's so innumerous, by the end of today, you should be able to take anything that you have, know, or going through, or somebody else is going through, and you should be able to do it yourself. And then we'll get back on track with the binding and loosing sheet that we were having. And we'll go back and pick it up right from that point on and move move more quickly. We're in already at part 22, and so we're going to try to make some good traction so it doesn't become part 122. And with me, it's very easy to do. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Alrighty. So before we get started, remember that I'm going to just say it, I'm going to say it probably now till Jesus comes. Don't forget the third prong of his ministry. Came here perfect. We all know that. Went to the cross, went to hell, rose up from the dead, sitting at God's right hand. We all know that. Perfect. We got that down. We're living in the day, <clears throat> in this age of grace, under the third prong. And not, none of this works. Not, all my teachings, nothing that we've ever talked about, nothing in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation will work unless you get down the third prong. And the third prong is your identity in Him to the nth degree on all things. <clears throat> okay? When He went to the cross, He became one with us utterly in our fallen state and all the capacities possible. Everything that you can conceive, imagine, and things that you cannot even conceive or imagine, He bore and became one with. Amen? So He went to hell and paid that enormous price as an innocent, perfect sin offering being and because the devil killed this man illegally um, the sin offering worked perfectly the sin offering was for the guilty you and me amen and so when Jesus was attached to us in our fallen state because he became sin with our sin when he was conferred innocent and righteous whatever he, the head got as long as it was now connected to the body the body got when he rose up from the dead and sat at God's own right hand we came there too. That's what I was telling you in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. You want to glance at there real quick. It says here, And even when we were dead in sins, and we were, that's where he became one with us in our fallen state, he quickened or made alive us together. God the Father made us alive together with Jesus and you and me, the head to the body, the body to the head, with Christ. For it was by an act of grace that we were saved. Verse 6, And he raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. That's the third prong. Now what's the benefits of that seating? God did everything and all we do is enter into his rest by releasing the faith of the Son of God. Now what were some of the benefits? Go up to verse chapter 1, verse 19 through 23. This is the benefits of that seating. You've got to get this third prong down. Everything else works because you got this down says here in verse 19 of chapter 1 of Ephesians, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? It was to usward who believe. Believe what? That God rose him from the dead, right? According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ and you and me, when he raised him and you and me from the dead, and set him and you and me at his own right hand in heavenly places, because Ephesians 2, 6 said that. But here's another benefit. We're far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that has a name. That's all. Just that. Everything in society, everything in human existence has a name attached to it. 
and we are in a higher authority, a higher dominion, and a higher position over anything that has a name. And that includes the demonic host and all their whole realm, because it says far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. That's the whole hierarchy of the devil and even the angels of God, okay? Of every name, not only in this world, this world, this world, but also in that which is to come in heaven. It's a given that when we get to heaven, we'll have this authority and dominion, but God doesn't separate the two. Man does, stupidly, unfortunately. He said, I'm bringing the earth, heaven down into the earth. That will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Somehow we subtracted the two or separated the two. God said that the kingdom of God is within you and upon you and among you. Okay? God never separated the two. And he's shown you here that he didn't. Amen. So not only are we above all these, well, who brought us above? Who made us to be higher than every demonic host, including the devil himself? God the Father did in the act of redemption through his Son. Where is that, Pastor? Next verse, 22. And he, meaning God, had put all things underneath his feet, meaning Jesus' feet were his feet, were the body. The feet are on the body. Okay? He put all things that he described in verse 21 underneath the feet of the body of, Ch of Christ the church. And gave him, Jesus, to be the head over all things to the church, verse 23, which is his body. This is the third prong. Okay? The fullness of him, we're the fullness of him. He's incomplete without us. The fullness of him that filleth all and all. Now God was independent of man, he was full. But the minute he made man, he needed him to be a part of himself, to be now fulfilled and complete. Okay? Now, the big thing about what you just read here is that God put the entire demonic host at the resurrection underneath the feet of the body of Christ. They are there already underneath your feet today in a prone position of defeat, failure, dejection, okay, and loss. We have to sell ourselves out into the capacity to believe this. Right now, unfortunately, it's still mental ascent in a lot of us. It's not, you know, reality, heartfelt reality. But when we know that we are sitting down, which connotates rest and finished product is already done, nothing more for God to do or you to do, and that all we have to do is release the faith of the Son of God into the acknowledgement that it's all done, and tell the Lord we enter into your rest, meaning everything you finished for us, and there's nothing for more for me to do but thank you and praise you and glorify you because of it. Amen? Now when we come into that, then the manifestation of 1 John 4, 17, 17 will kick in, as he is now, so are you in this world. Or as you are now, so is Jesus in heaven. Amen? That reality will become striking, because see, you, when you sat down, that told God the Father and you and me and everybody on this earth that everything that we will ever go through life was already you know, defeated for us and we were given the victory over it. Well, Pastor, then why do we still go through some you know, challenges down here? Because I'm telling you, it's still rattling around in our brains, but it hasn't been, you know, you haven't manifested or cultivated it or birthed it out through praying in the spirit and tongues out here in this natural world. To where you till it really becomes real. See, the scripture is absolute and final. The reality of the word is yea and amen. That's why God can make those boastful statements, because he knows it's done. The church needs to catch up to the reality of its finished product. So when we go through things here on this earth, we're going through them unnecessarily. It's like we always, you know, say to people, well, you know, when somebody dies and goes to hell, they went to hell for nothing, because the penalty and the price was paid. Well, then take that same mentality for everything that happens in life. Not just being born again or dying and going to hell. Okay? You know, stumbling and falling down and injuring yourself. That can be retroactive. That can be under redeemed time. You know, in the kingdom of God and healed and delivered. Because he could not come up out of, the, out of the three days and three nights in hell with you until everything was set to your account and given you the victory over. You've got to have this down. And I gave you plenty of examples last week. You know, people go through things in life, 
They go through divorces. They go through pain. They go through prison sentences. They go through everything for nothing when they didn't have to. They would have only known this and paid the price not to rebear this. No, paid the price and say, look, I'm shutting down this flesh. I've got to get into this secret place, the sweet spot in God, or as Jesus truly is today, in this victorious state. <laughs> See, because he's perfect and sinless again as it was in the beginning before he came, not that he had sinned, but sinless because he bore our sin, we're just as clean as he is, as though sin had never been. Or its consequences that those sins bore in our lives. So since he's free of the sin and the consequences too, and we are as well because we're connected in union with him, that we don't have to go through anything that is, you know, of any consequence or tragedy. You know, I always used to wonder, what is the sense of this thousand-year millennial reign? That's right around the corner. God's showing you that everything I'm explaining to you right now is true. Get it? Because everything that you would have already gone through that would have been on the tragic side of the equation, he's eliminating. There's going to be very little, if no tragedy at all, there's a thousand year millennial reign of Christ to show you the bliss and the, you know, the love and the vastness of our God and the completeness that he has. Okay, now is that as a framework? Don't ever forget this third prong. I'm going to do it every week till the rapture, till we get this thing down. And I'm going to say it a million different ways so that we can get into that place. Now, let's get into this drop-down thing, okay? If you want to go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, which is right next door, you got Ephesians and the book of um, Philippians and then Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 15. <clears throat> and to let the peace of God, remember, you have to let it. You let it. It's an act of your will to allow God to come in and what? Work what he finished and gave... See, when, when you drop down, you're telling God, I believe in the finished works of Christ. The pastor Pat just described and explained. Now you're allowing him to rectify any inequity in your life, whether it be financial, whether it be physical, whether it be anything, and bring it into restoration and harmony to him. If you don't believe me that that's true, watch this. We talked about this a couple of uh, teachings ago. Look at Colossians, since we're there, chapter 1, verse 20. This is what happens when you drop down. If you want the inner workings on things, this is what's going on. I'm teaching you this. Verse 20, and having made peace. Then we just talk about peace in 315? And let the peace of God, what, rule? Watch, 120 of Colossians. And having made peace now, because you're letting them in, Jesus in, through the blood of his cross, watch this, by him, Jesus, to reconcile all things back unto himself in him. So if you're going to reconcile all things back unto him, who's the him? Perfection. Perfectness. Everything's being restored. Harmony in the home. Perfect bliss in the home. Perfect bliss in your workplace. Everything breaks your way. You get the promotion, the other people don't. Only because you're in one with the author of reconciliation, Jesus, and he doesn't take a backseat to nobody. He gets all the promotion. Okay? To reconcile by the blood of his cross, to reconcile all things back unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things on the earth where we are today and things in heaven. What I'm explaining to you today also works up there and is done up there. Remember, God always puts the two together. He never separates heaven and earth. Man does to his demise and detriment. But God is always associating how heaven works the way the earth should be working too. And just drop down to verse 22. This is what's happening when you're dropping down. In verse 22, in the body of his flesh, through what he did on the DVR, his death, he now presents you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. Why? You just describe Jesus. And if you're going to describe Jesus that way, he has to describe his body because the heaven sees the body just like it sees Jesus and his body in heaven. I'm telling you, saints, this stuff works. It's powerful. 
I'm telling you. And when you do it with a spirit of generosity and love in your heart, things will start breaking your way. Okay? Go back to 315 here. And having made peace. Peace, oneness, union with God. Now I'm in union with Jesus. So Jesus looks at your flesh and he goes, hmm, this bodily organ is not lining up to how my bodily organ is. And he rectifies it because you drop down and you got rid of the blockage or the obstruction or the evil spirit that was keeping that organ from functioning it just like Jesus is in heaven. This is the inner workings. I'm teaching you what happens in, on the inside game. Okay? So when you're dropping down, he's examining your life. He's like, huh, this thing's out of divine order. They're dropping down. They want me to bring restoration, restitution, and recompense in this arena. They're casting out the obstructor, the devil. Now I can heal that physical organ perfectly. See how it works? And this works in all the arenas of life. I told you, not just your physical body, but in the financial world. Because everything you're bringing by the blood of the Lamb back into reconcile, reconciliation with Jesus. We were at a family picnic yesterday, and it was really a glorious event. We enjoyed ourselves, and uh, there's this one individual who was walking towards me, and he had a baby in his hand, and I walked up to the guy, and I was talking to the baby. I says, the baby turned its head for me. I go, don't you love me anymore? And the guy, father said, well, the baby's just, you know, shy. So I gave him a little hug, and I kissed the girl in the back of her head. Two minutes later, there was a raffle, and I won the you know raffle. Okay, several other people did too. But then I put my hand in the bucket because we were supposed to pick up for the next guy. Guess who won? This, the guy I hugged. You don't think God's in control of our lives when you walk circumspect before him? You don't think he's involved with that way? Okay. And many other people that were in our family also won. They're, they get the overflow of our anointing. Amen? All right, so 315. Look at it carefully again. There's another key word in there, rule rule. God is a dominator. He's in dominion. He's, a, you know, he's an authoritarian over his kingdom, of which we're a part of. Jesus is not a doxile king. He doesn't want you to be one either. It says here, let the peace of God rule or dominate. You, this is your domain. This is your kingdom inside you too. Not just a part. This is your kingdom. Not the devil's. Yours. Okay? Let it rule in your heart, to the which also you are called. We are called to do this. Because we're only, because, here's the answer, because we're one body. Not just you and me, and, but you and me and Jesus. Because we're in one body. And therefore, be thankful. The, the, the clincher, thank you, Lord, for doing that for me. It's shown adoration, it's shown appreciation. Okay? Hallelujah. So last week now, with all that as a framework, we left off. We had covered, you know, cancer, bones, nerves, muscular issues, and all of those other things that are associated with muscular issues, okay? And any of all diseases, because there's so many, put them in there. You know how to drop down. If you forgot what we're about to do, let that be a refresher for you. Now what we're going to cover today is back pain, discs areas, people who've had herniations of discs. Okay, that's one. Second one is skin. All skin issues. Okay, whether you got a problem with it, whether you don't have a problem with it. I'm telling you, if none of you here have a problem with what I'm about to cover, you sit there and you drop down to and get yourself through the gospel immunized by God Almighty in heaven. So in the future, you're not going to suffer these things because you've been divinely immunized against any future tragedy in these arenas. Okay? Hair issues. Okay? Well, my hair's starting to fall out, fall out or whatever. It's not, it's not part of the kingdom. Death has been abolished and everlasting life and immortality has been established. Okay? Another category, all pain. That covers a gambit, doesn't it? And weaknesses. So those are going to be our next subset. Back pain, which includes discs, that's one. Skin issues is two. Hair issues is three. All pain and weaknesses. Now that weakness thing is a big one too. 
It's the inability to produce results in a miraculous way. I'm going to finish that sentence. Okay, I'm going to put that tag along in there because that's exactly what weakness means. Your inability to produce a result in a miraculous way and get the provision in front of you or done or made. Okay? Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, again, anybody who has a spine issue through pain, uh, when we talk about back pain and, and discs, you're talking about sciatica issues. Could happen from lifting something, uh, twisting wrong, you know, you bent over and it, you just wrenched something happened. Could be a pulled muscle also in that arena, okay? Or a herniated disc, and there's nothing more discomforting than that, you know, from the fifth lumbar all the way up, okay? Take your immunized shot if you're not suffering that today. Get your immunization shot today. Don't call me three months from now and say, oh, geez, I did this. I go, did you take your immunization? No, when you dropped down, I thought it was somebody else. I'm going to tell you to drop down, and then call me back, okay? I would love to pray with you, but I want you to follow these instructions, okay? Next, skin, real quick, both internal and external skin. When we talk about skin, everybody thinks about, you know, the skin on your flesh and your face and all that. you got just as much skin on the inside of you. Every organ has t uh, skin on it, okay? It's got tissue. It's covered with a membrane. And that's just as important to have protected and covered as well. Well, I don't like the fact that I'm aging and I'm getting a wrinkle here and I'm getting a wrinkle there. We're going to drop down and take care of that. Will it work, Pastor? Maybe not the first time, but it might. But maybe the tenth time or the hundredth time, it still will. Okay? It's going to start working. Because God, Jesus is looking at you and he says, Geez, I don't have any wrinkles. Um... I've got to bring this, this body and its flesh because I'm bone of their bone and flesh of their flesh. Remember it says we're flesh of his flesh. Okay? So if he doesn't have any wrinkles, you can't have any. Well, I'm young yet. I don't have to worry about that. Drop down now. So when you're 75, 95, 125, you still don't have any wrinkles. Okay? You're taking shots today for your future divine immunization issues. Amen? Okay. So any type of person who's got also a problem with their skin, psoriasis, uh, shingles, all that stuff. Any inflammation on their skin. Okay, let's move on from that. Pain. Um, I, it's, it's, good. it's a self-imposed definition. Any pain in your body, headaches, bone, muscular, you know, knee, hips, any pain whatsoever. It's got its own category and weaknesses. So here we go. And for you, some of you who are brand new, who are picking up this up on YouTube, and by the way, uh, family here in our Zoom room and YouTube, our ministry is growing exceedingly. We just got uh, people from Australia calling us and getting into our services. I got many, many, many uh, pastors and uh, other people from Africa and some and many other nations. So you're all a part of that now. Now in, in Revelation chapter 1, the Apostle John was looking at Jesus. He turned and saw him. In verse 12, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And as I turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Verse 13, and in the middle of the candlesticks, one who was like unto the Son of Man, meaning Jesus, clothed with a garment, down to the floor, girt about with paps, with a golden girdle. And his head and his hair were as white as wool, white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet were like unto fine brass, as they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. 16. And it had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went forth a two-edged sword. See, when you call and drop down, what's, what is Jesus doing? How are those, how are those de you know, black dots that we talk about fragmenting? Is it just being consumed by the glory only? No, he is chopping those things up into a zillion different pieces with the sword of the Spirit that's coming out of his mouth. It's a two-edged sword, so it's up down one side and up the other way. Okay? He's, he's taking them out up, you know, by killing them up one side and down the other. 
and his countenance, here's the key, was as the sun shineth in its strength or in the, in the zenith of its power as in the noonday sun. So think about that. Get a you know picture of Jesus, you know, where he, his glory is emanating. Remember at the Mount of Transfiguration, they could not even look at Jesus. They, they closed their eyes because of the brilliance that he was. Okay, he was just glowing like a supernatural, tremendous being of great glory and light. So get that image in your mind. And if you can't, then, you know, go look outside for about a, you know, tenth of a second, that great big ball in the sky, the sun, S-U-N, and make a big circle inside of your spirit. Put your hands on your belly right now and get that image of a big circle of the sun or the son of God and the, and the glory of his countenance. Now, let's put those four evil spirits, and believe me, they're demons, okay? Back pain or disc issues, herniated disc or anything like that you may have ever had. And if you don't, you're getting immunized from it in the future. Skin, okay, from all that we talked about, not going to reiterate it. Hair, okay, you want to have your natural pigmentation that you had when you were 33 and a half years old, because he does. Well, it says that he's got white hair. That's because it was the glory. The glory overtook everything. All you saw, all John saw was the glory over his hair. Okay? That wasn't white because he's old. Okay? And all pain, that's another dot. So you got skin dot, hair dot, the black dot inside of that circle, and all pain or weaknesses. Okay? Pain can come from every source childbearing, you know, anything that people are going through. It doesn't matter, you know, pain from being ill, uh, being attacked by a disease, illness, or cancer in their body, any type of pain. And then that weakness is, is an inability to produce results <coughs> to the degree of walking in the realm of the miraculous. Okay? To that degree. So, in other words, it's time to be a superman or woman. in Christ Jesus. So keep your hands on your belly because out of your innermost belly shall flow rivers, plural, rivers of living waters and each one of those rushing rivers has that anointing on it to take out that particular spirit and give healing to your physical body. I may say, well, what does water got to do with healing my physical body? Okay, I'm glad you asked that. Well, nobody asked you that. You just said that. Yep, I did because the Holy Ghost said that to show you. So in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 1. <clears throat> Here we go. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. That's exactly what's going on right now. When you drop down and we have Jesus inside of us and the person of the Holy Ghost, the glory goes through the river of, of glory, this water goes through the Father, through Jesus, through the Holy Ghost inside you. But what is it doing? Here's what it's doing. Watch this. And it's proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, verse 2, and in the midst of the street and on either side of this river, there is the tree of life. Boy, isn't that important to eat the tree of life, which is Jesus, the Word? And they have 12 manner of fruits, and they yield their fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing, the healing, the healing, the physical healing too of the nations. So when we talk about these rivers of water coming out of your innermost being, they bring healing. It's the healing bomb of Gilead. They're healing your physical body. They're healing your soul, your mind, your will and emotions. We'll get into traumas in a bit. Okay? They're taking all that out. Okay? So drop down, close your eyes and get a picture of that big ball with the blazing like the sun <clears throat> or a picture of Jesus in his glory and you see those four dots that we are putting there it says and let the peace so we're going to let this peace have the rule over us and dominate these four spirits the four spirits again are back pain or discs okay that's one dot the next one is skin the second dot third one is hair fourth one is all pain and weaknesses or the inability to walk as a God man or woman and Superman status. How big is that? Okay, so you got four 
fort that there. Now, as you're seeing them sitting there, the glory of God that's in and around, that's in the backdrop, is starting to consume and <clears throat> come upon these four dots. And remember, it's just not the glory, but the rivers of life that are coming out of your innermost belly. They're already there. Jesus is sending a river against the back pain right now. He's sending a river against any skin or hair issues. He's sending a river against, you know, discs that need to be repaired. <clears throat> All pain. Another river. Another river for weaknesses. And see the, that river washing you in a tree of life, which brings you back into the Garden Eden before you fell in Adam in the beginning. And now remember it says, Out of his mouth proceedeth forth a two-edged sword, where he cuts things up one side and down the other. He's starting to cut these pinhead fragments of these dark things. He's cutting them in half. But while that's going on, though, the glory is at work. And they're no longer jet black, but now they're, you know, becoming gray. <coughs> Excuse me. They're becoming even lighter gray and a more lighter shade of gray. They're breaking up. They're losing their, their cons you know, their constituency. They're even getting more fragmented. Now they're like an off-white. Uh, they're getting overwhelmed because they've been eternally defeated. They've got no chance. Saints have never had a chance. You're just giving Jesus an opportunity to enforce the finished works that he accomplished for you. And have three days and three nights in his DBR. <coughs> Hallelujah. Now they're breaking up even more to where they're almost... There's no substance to them anymore. They're almost like granules of sand. And that glory is more intense. Now here, let's put a bombshell down on these four. Lord, they're not coming against me. They're coming against you. They're coming against thee. Boy, that riles up the kingdom. I'm telling you, it does. Because he doesn't tolerate double jeopardy. There, he just stoked them up higher. And now you can't see them anymore. The four are gone. They're, they're consumed by the the glory, the whiteness, it's all white now. There's no more, those four dots are history. And finally, we take authority over all four and cast them out, loose us, and go into a dry and desert spot, not to hinder humankind again. <clears throat> Amen. Now take three deep breaths. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> And if we can get a yawn going, thank God. It's a great sign that it worked. It's a sign and a wonder. That that spirit got expelled, or if you have a cough. Amen. Hallelujah. Just wait on him. Wait, wait, I say. Take some more deep breaths. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. Alrighty. Just got to go on there. Okay, we're going to go to the next subset for the sake of time here. I want to get as much in as I possibly can. If we don't finish, I'm not going to just say, well, we're done. No, we'll, we'll get at least these categories done. For sure. <coughs> yeah, we're, we're good on time right now. Let's go to addictions. Well, I'm not addicted to anything. You might be. Okay, let's find out if you are or not. Some for sure you may not be, but again, in the future. Smoking. That'll be one of the dots. Second one, drinking. Drinking alcohol, okay? That's a second dot. Gambling. Third dot. Well, I don't gamble. Well, maybe not with money, but you do in other arenas, okay? Fourth one, sexual vices. And in today's society, you know, you can bet that the devil works overtime in this one. That includes adultery, fornication, a to Z gender identities, okay? Same sex issues or any type of porn, that, that, 
Okay, so you got four of them there. Well, I don't do any of those. You're a liar. Don't tell me that you can look away from any scantily clad girl when you're walking around or you see a pretty girl at a restaurant. Okay, stop lying. That'll be another dot that we get out of you later. Or vice versa, okay? One might see a hot guy that they like and they start mentally fantasizing. Well, sometimes it's okay to fantasize, but not to a point where it becomes an addiction and dominates you with that dopamine, okay? <clears throat> so we're going to take authority over these addictions. And one of the greatest way to get rid of these, and it's, it's an easy one to remember, just always say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Joseph Prince said that people who are heavy smokers, he goes, I don't, I don't want you to fight it. I don't want you to try to beat it with your willpower. It's not going to happen. But every time you pick up a cigarette and light it, I want you to say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. While they're puffing on that cigarette and inhaling it, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. By the time they're done with that cigarette, they said it five or six times. Next cigarette, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Same thing. He said usually within two weeks to a month, six weeks on the high side, that addiction just left him. It's gone. Okay? Because you're telling God that he is your righteousness and God's not a smoker. So anytime you say that you are God's righteousness, you're telling God what you are or believe that you are in him as him. So you can't say, well, I'm addicted to drinking. God doesn't drink. Okay? Maybe normal drinks, but not, you know, alcoholic beverages that can get people wrecked in a car wreck. Intoxication, okay? Oh, Jesus made water in the wine. Sure he did. But everything, you know, with brevity, okay, saints, and not to abuse. So drinking alcohol, that's the second one. The third one, <clears throat> gambling. And this is a big one, more, more than you can know. And when that gets a clutch and a claw on you, it's hard to break that. Once in a blue moon, you can walk away from things like that. I remember when I was a teenager, me and my friend, we would gamble about everything, playing ping pong, you know, sometimes just for small things, a quarter, stuff like that. We got into playing cards and things started getting more serious, $5, $10, $20, okay? We would shoot pool, we were gambling on that. Then it wasn't enough, we had to gamble on every ball that went in the pocket that we shot. So it was becoming a bondage, okay? So one day after six months of this or whatever, arguments started to form. People were losing too much money one day or one day, you know, wasn't healthy. So we all looked at one another and said, well, that's it. We took the cards and threw them down. And I'm telling you, that was total grace because we didn't know God at all. We never, I, you know, we never went back to gambling. My whole crew that I was doing it with, we just walked away. Now, that's, a, that's very much the exception and not the rule. Okay? The rule is, I am the righteousness of God, and I don't have to gamble. It doesn't have any dominion over me. Well, God gambles. He told the apostles to, when, you know, when Judas died, to cast lots. He did it for their sake, not for his. Human beings had to have a reference point on what to do and how to make a choice. <clears throat> okay? So don't use that as an excuse when you're broke, busted, and disgusted, and your pockets are inside and out, that you try to say God's okay and he's into it. No, it's a way of the devil to theft you of your life source. Okay? And it's not only just in the obvious things. Well, I'm going to be in a, you know, pool over here or at work, or I'm going to do this over here, and I'm going to gamble about that. Gambling can encroach upon your life in so many little ways that you don't even know that it's happening. It's okay to be an entrepreneur and take chances in life after you've referenced them with the Lord. Okay, God encourages that. He hates passivity. He'd rather have you go for it and fail than to do nothing. Okay, we're not talking about that. We're talking about gambling where it's a compulsion thing where you're driven by the devil. All right, let's go to the next one. That's another dot, by the way. <clears throat> All right, sexual vices, and don't I don't care. I mean, unless you don't don't have any emotion, and you were born without emotion or sensory perception, you know you've gone through this in life, and no, it's never been more intense than in our day. 
Because Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the end times. Don't tell me you're not touched with this. Well, I'll cast the devil out again right now. <clears throat> okay, so any sexual vices, and let's say you happen to be pristine, God bless you. You're being immunized for the future. And if you're going through this now and we're going to cast the devil out of you, fine. You're immunized for the night, for the future so you don't go back. Just because you're in it doesn't mean that you can never be, not be immunized for the future. Okay? Any adultery, <clears throat> okay, we, that's obvious what that is. Uh, fornication, which is sex outside of marriage of any sort. This one here galls me the most. A to Z, gender identities and what they're doing, the mutilation, what's going on with our children. It's so heartbreaking. It can bring tears to anybody almost immediately. You know, because none of us are really doing that, saints, and I know it, we're, when we drop down for that, we're doing it for the, the poor souls that are doing it. The parents who need to be loose and the poor children who are going to have massive regret later. All right, uh, next, same sex issues. We know how God feels about that. Ask the people who are still at Sodom and Gomorrah. Buried a little bit, you know, 60 feet of fire and brimstone, right? But they can be delivered. So since if you're not into this, fine. We drop down for somebody else who's going through this torment. <clears throat> and pornography of any sort, okay? And it's just not watching things. It's everywhere. Billboards, this, that. You go to a beach, you know. Can't do the clad girls. That's you know these movies play all the day long in your head if you allow them to. Drop down, okay. And again, unless you're blind, unfortunately, and uh, we're gonna again we're gonna cover that one more time too. And and you don't have any of your senses working at all. Um, you need to get immunized from this issue, okay. God doesn't want you to be a robot, where you have no feelings. But on the other hand. Anything that's out of your control means that the devil's got control over you. You don't want that to happen. So that's another dot. So let's go over the dots real quickly again. Ready? Sexual vices of any sort, okay? Any which way that you try to get into them. Okay? Adultery and fornication. That's all that grouping. Second one is A to Z, gender identities. Third... <coughs> Uh, Same-sex issues, and fourth, pornography of any sort. All right, so let's put all four of those inside. Okay. Well, I don't want to put those in me. I never had them. You don't you think not, but you're getting immunized from them. Remember what an immunized shot is. They give you the, the so-called disease. It's supposed to be dead. Your body recognizes it, and it's supposed to counter it. So that's all you're doing here. You're not putting a spirit in you. And making sure it never stays in you. And the biggest thing God does in all this, He pulls the tentacles out. You know, these things got roots. He pulls them out by the roots and tentacles. Any plant that is in us that God has not planted, He plucketh out, the scripture says. Okay? So, that's a good thing. Hallelujah. So just see that circle again, or Jesus and His brilliance. Get that brilliance. Okay, first dot in there, all sexual vices of any sort. Two, well, that includes adultery and fornication. Two, A to Z, gender identities, that's the second dot. Three, same-sex issues. Fourth, all and any type of porn, billboards, internet porn, it doesn't matter. Okay, all of it's inside of us right now, those four. Now, they're just like any other demon, just got a different name. They're just as stupid. They're just as insidious. You know, they're just as crazy as somebody having a, a pain in their elbow. They're just a different devil. But it just is defeated because remember what I told you in the beginning of the teaching. All principalities, powers, might, and dominion, and everything that has a name, including, you know, sexual vices, porn, and all that. They got names. They're all underneath your feet. All we're doing now is ensuring and enforcing their defeat by bringing them to Jesus. <coughs> so see those four dots. Put your hand on your belly. Hallelujah. 
All right, now see the brilliance of Jesus stoking it up. Now see these rivers. There's four rivers, one for the sexual vices, one for the adultery and fornication. Okay, another river for um, A to Z gender identities and, you know, transmutilation issues. Another one for same sex, another river for that one. And lastly, for any type of porn, past, present, or any future thing that you might go through or tempted to. There's a river washing you, washing you with the river of the tree of life from the throne room. Notice this river from God the Father, a gift. Goes through God the Son, Jesus. Goes through God the Holy Spirit inside of you, washing you with the blood, reconciling you to Jesus, because Jesus doesn't have any of these. So when you drop down and do this, Jesus is looking around himself and goes, hmm, I don't have any vices, so I can't have my beloved have any either. So he pulls that that one out, you know, by the roots. You know, and it goes right down the line. You know, I'm not in a, you know, porn. So he pulls it up by the roots. I'm not into any of these genders. Marty brought up a great point the other day. Anytime you run into these people, just simply say Genesis 126. He made a male and female. That ends all arguments. Okay? <clears throat> so all that's taken care of. And then, then the other thing about these parents and transmutilations and all that. Or do we just, just drop down for these people? We're, we're interceding for these people too, saints. That's part of your job, is to be an intercessor. And all the glory is getting stronger as the rivers are flowing over these spirits. They're losing their darkness. Their blackness is now light gray. Man, and Jesus, they're not coming against me. They're coming against you, thee. Oh, he hates that. Now they're fragmented. Now they're breaking up. Now they're light gray. Hmm, now they're off white. Seems like he's more aggressive against this group, grouping than any of the other ones so far. They're breaking it loose in their constituency even more. Now they're breaking up to where they're, there's no continuity, just all granules of sand. And he's stoking up the thing, his power and his glory and his rivers even more. And poof, there it is, like flash paper. They're gone. All those categories and subtopics are gone. Just meditate on Jesus. Meditate on that glory. And take those deep breaths. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And don't forget the last one, and be thankful. Lord, on the past one we just did, we're thankful for getting rid of the back pain, disc, skin, hair, all pain and, and all weaknesses. This one now, all thanksgiving. Lord, it's getting rid of, Lord God. All the sexual vices, adultery, fornication, A to Z, gender identities, okay? Same sex issues and all porn. Thank you for delivering. Thank you for pulling up by the roots. Thank you for those clean rivers, healing our souls, healing our souls, our emotional makeup, healing our eyes, will, our eye gates, ear gates, sensual perceptions, our intellect. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do those deep breaths. Make sure you get your immunization shot for these, for the future. Well, I don't want to do that, Pastor, because I'm never going to be in same sex. Okay, fine. Do it. You know why? Because you're doing it. If you take that immunization shot from heaven now, not only will you never have the tendency in the future, but you'll be able to pray for other people who are going through this. Because now you're anointed, and you got the what? You got the DNA and the reciprocal reversal working for you to deliver them. Amen? There's nothing in common with me that's in common with the devil. But everything that is inside me is in common with Jesus. Oh, another yawn there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Well, Pastor, if you yawn, you just expelled a demon. That means that you were in one of these things. So? I was a teenager at one time. Okay? <clears throat> Don't be so sanctimonious or you're going to have a pharisaical spirit. Okay? We're free, saints. When the Son is set free, is free indeed. Remember what I read to you in the Colossians. 122. In the body of his flesh, which is you, because you're his flesh now, through his death he presents you now to heaven and the throne, holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. That's who I am. That's who you are. Don't you be ashamed about squat. You are free, saints. Hallelujah. And now, let's cast them out. You foul spirit of sexual vices, which include adultery, fornication, and anything of that sort, you are bound and cast out and cast out into a dry and desert spot. <clears throat> also, all A to Z gender identities, all of you are bound by the power of the authority of Almighty God. And Matthew 16, 19 and such, you're bound and cast out into a dry and desert spot, not to hinder humankind again. All same-sex issues, okay, you're bound in Jesus' name, and you're cast out into a dry and desert spot, not to hinder humankind again. Amen. Any pornography issues whatsoever, no matter how incidental or not, even you know billboards and all that, cast out in Jesus' name into a dry and desert spot, not to hinder humankind again, and amending into all those, and not to hinder us personally and specifically. Okay? Amen. You're not to come back. They run into a blood wall in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I just meditate and just keep thanking him. Take some more deep breaths. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Deep breaths, deep breaths, deep breaths. Okay, we're going to close there. Ran out of time. Hallelujah. And just for the record, next week, if you know any of these people, gently bring them into the room without condemnation. Anybody who's on prescription drugs, there's nothing wrong with them, but God can heal you and deliver you from the effects of those and for sure the side effects of those. Next one, fentanyl. Anybody you know or don't know, that's tons of people do know, so we'll intercede for them, drop down for them. Any type of painkillers, oxycodone, okay, anything like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, heroin, coke, weed. How about this addiction? Food. Ooh, ooh. You know, all the, all the, a lot of self righteous people there. No, it's not me. That's not me. That's not me. That's not me. That's not me. Get the immunization. So are the future. Amen. And the good news is, I know food could be a problem. Now, when I was growing up, I, um, not only was I as thin as a rail. But I could eat, 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 and that's still gluttony. Gluttony doesn't mean being overweight and fat. Okay? So you just have an over and tendency to overeat. But that's an addiction, too. There's a moderation for everything, saints. Okay? So we're going to take care of that next week, too. Alrighty? And those are good things that we can get out of people's lives. Amen. Hallelujah. And then when, on the prescription drug thing, we're going to talk about what I sent out to people, the pharmacia thing. How that is tied into sorcery and all that. We're going to cover that next week. I'm going to cover something here that's a sacred cow with a lot of you people. Um, taking nutritional products is a good thing. But, you know, in time, even back off the reliance on them. Because Jesus is the, your ultimate healer. Okay? They're good things to take. And you better them than prescription drugs by a mile. And sometimes we have to take them only because our food supply has been depleted. There's nothing in our food. You know, pesticides, herbicides, you know, and every other side is in there. They've taken all of our nutrients away, so you're getting bland stuff. Okay? Then under the general category, we're going to talk about sleeplessness. You know, people who can't sleep well at night. Fear of loss, <laughs> that's a big one. All traumas in a soul, that's a huge one. Now here's another big one, fear of the future. 
things that are going on you know, in our country and so on and so forth. Amen? All right, and um, we'll lift up people's jobs, okay? Government policy decisions that people might have a fear over or any of the shots, uh, digital currency, climate change issues, CTR, all that, or CRT, all that stuff, we'll cover it, amen? And then when we get done with those categories, we're gonna get back to the regular buying and loosing sheet. Now as you get your communion ready, <clears throat> and also your tithe and offering, I wanna bring this up to you. <sighs> How often should I do this? I know it's going through your brain. You keep doing it. Well, why didn't it work the first time? It did. You may have a nest of spirits that need to come out. There may be a few. Well, why didn't Jesus get them out the first time? Who cares? Who knows who? That's not your concern. Keep drop down. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. This is as closest as you're ever going to get to tangibly touching the glory of God yourself on purpose and on demand. Okay? You're actually dropping down. The anointing in your hands is touching the anointing inside of Christ inside of you. And you're sandwiching these spirits. And they're being cast out. And the Lord now is going into your organs and physically healing your organs. Even while I'm speaking, it's happening. Okay? Hallelujah. So let's take communion. Hopefully you have your, your bread with you. Amen. And your grape juice. Here we go. Say this with me. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you, Lord God, for the message today. We believe and receive all that you are for us and all that you can be for us. For as you are today, so are we in you in this world. Every organ, tissue, and cell that we have is yours. It's been identified as yours. It was you who said in, in Ephesians 5.30 that we're bone of your bone and flesh of all of your flesh. Every part of it, including teeth, gums, roots, everything, Lord, hair, top to bottom. And on top of that, we're into your prime of life at 33 and a half years old. Death has been abolished. An everlasting life and immortality has been established. Amen. Father, we see things through the eye of our faith, through the Word of God. This material world means nothing. You took an army of dry bones, they disappeared. Everything was rotted off. And you put clean, new, fresh sinews, tissues, cells, nerves, flesh. And these people became living human beings out of nothingness. That's the power of our God. How much more shall he do with his saints that are one with Jesus' flesh, one with Jesus' bones, to glorify his own son and his body through the finished works that he orchestrated himself? So, Lord, every organ, tissue, and cell truly is yours. Our DNA is yours. We have your genetic salvation. We have your prime of life as you are now. Today, so are we truly in every capacity in our physical flesh in this world. Our youth is renewed day by day, and our body parts do not grow old or worn out because we're in union with the Christ child. We thank you, Father, that we have all of these things today. Remember, when you take communion, you're releasing the glory of all that Jesus did for you in his DBR and to you at that moment as well. So Father, through the dropping down and through us taking communion right now, receive your physical healing right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May partake of the bread. Thank you, Lord. 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 <clears throat> Hallelujah. Saints, take the cup and say this with me, Father, in Jesus' name. I walk in in a cup of the glory of Almighty God, His precious blood of His Son. That blood is not only within me, through the new birth that's over me by my choice and volition. <coughs> Hallelujah. That covers my eyes, nose, mouth, lips, fingers, and hands. Protect me from variants, COVID issues, any other respiratory issues known and unknown, or anything that's in my life. 
Everything that we've ever done, past, present, and future, is covered by the blood. In this day and age, under the third prong in grace, we're not using the blood of animals and goats and sheep and such and cattle. We're using the precious blood of the Almighty God. And when the enemy sees that, he's respectful towards it, and he passes over. We need to honor the Lord with just as much respect as the devil sees it. We have to have it, because he knows what it did. So, Lord, we truly honor the blood. It is a holy thing, Lord God. We step in Christ's righteousness, his sinlessness, his innocence, everything that blood had to do. It's over all of our lives, spirit, soul, and body, financially, physically, socially, and economically. It covers every transaction in our life, even in the financial realm. We thank you, Lord God, that we walk in a victory. That blood leans for us, it intercedes for us, it advocates for us. It's always calling out the work that it did for us the beloved of the Lord, which is his body, you and me. We take this, Lord God, and we cherish it. We reverence it, Lord God, and we thank you for its power and efficacious work in our lives. We thank you for all these things, Father, now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May partake of the cup. God is good. Hallelujah. And get your offering ready, saints, tithes and offerings. We pray in that together with you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Amen. Thank you. All right, saints, pray this with me. As we take this baptism to the altar of the Father God and to Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for our tithes and offerings. And Jesus is the Apostle and High Priest after the order of Melchizedek. As he takes this basket, Lord God, we enunciate unto him that all the giving that we've ever given, Lord God, to up to today and all the future, we receive a thousandfold blessing and a thousandfold return of all the giving now. That giving, Lord God, is retroactive because we put redeemed time on it. We're in the kingdom where everything breaks our way. Death has been abolished and everlasting life and immortality has been established. And we enunciate it as the ambassadors here in the earth. Father, we thank you for all debt is gone, canceled, mortgage, credit card debt, school debt, college debt, any other debt. We command it to go. We command, use commanding, command it, saints. In your own time, get a loan in the car and blast away the debt. Hallelujah. We thank you that the angels of Almighty God, uh, they go forth in the northeast, south, and west from expected and unexpected sources. And they bring in the last day, end time, wealth transferring, destiny, you know, the destiny financial wealth that we're to walk in in these end times. We thank you that we have it now in Jesus' name. Now, ministering angels, we're telling, I say unto you, that money come unto me now, that come unto all of us today and tomorrow, and all the days of our life receive financial wherewithal. Those of you that have written in Africa, I command an exceeding blessing upon you, and I rebuke that spirit of poverty, debt, lack, and any curse that's on your land. And I command much prosperity on you and over all the saints of God that are hearing my voice now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What we're going to do now, saints, is uh, the 91st Psalm. And, um, I want you to be meditating on this teaching that we did today. Because it's a powerful thing, saints. Um, you know, this technique that you're learning today, if, if you want to go over some of the things that we covered in the past, um, go ahead and do that. You can do this on your own time. Um, that's what it's for. Um, you know, by repetition and sharing these things with you. Thank God you have it on video. And um, we can do these things. But the 91st Psalm will be on your screen shortly. Also, um, those who are on YouTube, turn to your Bibles, tablets, phones, whatever you have in front of you. 
and we'll be doing this together as a group. Amen? Hallelujah. Here we go. We who dwell in a secret place of the Most High do lodge, abide, and stand in the shadow of El Shaddai. We do say to the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress and our God. In Him do we trust. Surely He has delivered us from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He's covered us with His feathers and under His wings do we trust. His truth is our shield and buckler. We're not afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilent that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, and ten thousand at our right hand, but shall never come nigh us. O with our eyes shall we behold, and see the reward of the wicked, because we've made the Lord, which is our refuge, even the Most High, our habitation. There shall no evil befall us, neither any plague come nigh our dwelling. For he has given his mighty angels charge over us to keep us in all thy ways. They shall bear us up in their hands, lest we dash our foot against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion, the adder, and young lion and dragon, do we trample under feet, <coughs> treading upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore have I delivered him. I have set him on high, because he has known my name. He's called upon me, and I've answered him. I'm with him in trouble. I do deliver them and honor him. With long life do I satisfy them, and show them my continued, ongoing, everlasting, perpetual, and eternal salvation, which is our Jesus. It's our health, healing, wholeness, soundness, deliverance, preservation, safety and assurance, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Hallelujah. Thank you, saints. Hallelujah. Now let's do a closing prayer together. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this time that we've had together with the saints in our church service, Lord God. They disembark from here, they disembark from the Zoom room and their everyday travels and also through the YouTube family that we have throughout the world. May God's blood be heavily upon you and you have mercies, tender mercies and traveling mercies whether you walk, you drive, for his, heavy, for his precious blood is above, beneath, and front, behind, and the sides of the car, as well as his mercies, tender mercies, and traveling mercies. His hands heavy upon you, as well as the holy angels of Almighty God. Once again, above, beneath, and front, behind, and the sides where you walk or drive. Not only do we pray for us, Lord God, but also for the unrighteous or the heathen. Psalm 2 says that the heathen have been given unto us for our inheritance. So we are protecting them, because they are future members of the body of Christ. And also, Lord God, we protect and pray for them so that they uh, and their activities do not cause injury to us. Amen. Hallelujah. And Father, my prayer for the saints for this week is that they go forth with this, the power of the Spirit, that they're learning how to contact heaven, dropping down, getting breakthroughs in their own personal lives, and also interceding for others that need it. And that they really perfect this, Lord God, because I want this to stay with them forever. And furthermore, Lord God, to be astute to what is happening in and around them uh, and current events. So we can pray against those things and bring blessing instead. Amen. Because we were born to be blessed and to be a blessing. So that is our function and job. To bring forth blessings upon ourselves and one another. Hallelujah. And Father, we just thank you that you have heard this prayer. I command prosperity, peace, and I ask the saints, what I do every week, to continue in the Word. Continue to listen to it. Many of you drive to work, listen to half of it there, half of it on the way home. And as you do, you'll get it down deep in your spirit, and it'll bless you exceedingly, and it'll bless you abundantly. Father, we thank you for all these things now, by and through the blood of Jesus, and all of God's people said, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise God, saints. This wraps up our service today with Spirit Word Ministries and you. Again, we thank you for being uh, being a participant with us and allowing and a part of us, our church family. Thank you for allowing us to be your pastors. Amen. And thank you for being uh, our parishioners. Uh, we thank you for all that you do, all that you, all that you are. We thank you for your prayer support that you give us all the time. Thank you for your financial support. It's a blessing towards us. It's how we survive and live. God is our source, but he uses people. Amen. And thank you for your diligence and for the things and the blessings. I expect God's blessings to be upon you 
all next week I want you to start working miracles believing for miracles and then I want to start hearing some good reports about what you've been doing on this technique came in so until we meet again next week saints I want to let you know stay in his presence peace his presence peace and also everything that that he will give you this day have an expectation of his goodness okay stay in that in that abiding place stay in that rest I'll let him work his final his final finished work for you until we meet again saints next week I want to let you know we love you God loves you and may his richest peace be upon you all the days of your life have a great week saints see you next week and by the way call me if you need me text me or write me we're here for you Bye-bye now. God bless you.